The Tinnicus Rock is the outermost bird island on the main coast. It is about 23 miles southeast of the mid-coast town of Rockland. It is a 22-acre treeless island with piles of giant granite boulders. I first heard about Matinicus Rock when I was a student assistant at the Greenwich Audubon Camp. Carl Buckheister, then president of Audubon, came to visit one day and he told stories about his time on the rock. And it made me want to visit there someday. And I did visit my first time looking for some special puffins. Since 1973, I have been translocating puffin chicks from Great Island, Newfoundland to Eastern Egg Rock as part of a puffin restoration project, as the colony on Egg Rock was decimated by hunters. By 1979, I had moved about 500 puffin chicks and banded off just before they fledged, but only a few had returned to Egg Rock. Puffin chicks leave the nesting island. They stay at sea for their first two years until they pick their own future home at about five or six years of age. In 1979, I asked Carl Buckheister if I might come out and look for any of our translocated puffins that might be visiting Matinicus Rock. To my amazement, when I looked out over Matinicus Rock, and with my spotting scope, I examined the legs of puffins. I spotted puffins wearing bands that we put on the Newfoundland puffin chicks. And by 1980, we found the first puffin translocated from Newfoundland, but breeding on Matinicus Rock. Matinicus Rocks, the first lighthouse, was built in 1827. This was two wooden towers and a wooden house. This was replaced by much more resistant granite towers and a granite house in 1846. On January 19, 1856, a great storm engulfed the rock. The 17 year old Abby Burgess, later known as the lighthouse heroine, she kept the whale oil light burning throughout the storm while her father Samuel was ashore obtaining medicine for her sick mother, whose name was Thankful. In 1857, after that great storm, a new lighthouse was built with twin towers much further apart than the original design. Much of the original building survives to this day. Arctic and common terns were the main focus of the hunt. Their white feathers were prized to decorate fine fashion for women's hats. By 1902, most of the Tinnicus Rock terns were decimated by feather hunters and only two puffin pairs remain. William Dutcher of the American Ornithologist Union was a driving force for the bird protection movement. Dutcher hired James Hall, the assistant lightkeeper of Matinicus Rock, in 1900 to protect the birds. Matinicus Rock was one of the first bird sanctuaries in the United States. Continued bird protection by resident lightkeepers helped the seabirds to slowly increase. In 1984, Matinicus Rock became automated, and that led the following year to an arrangement where Audubon staff could live in the historic lighthouse. In 1999, Matinicus Rock became part of the Maine Coastal Islands National Wildlife Refuge System. The Audubon researchers that live on the island now work with more than puffins. They follow population changes in puffins, razorbills, murres, and terns, and study the foods that seabirds bring to their young. This provides information about changes in the ecology of the Gulf of Maine linked to climate change and fisheries. Puffins call from underground to help announce occupied territories. Puffins make a deep, resonant sound that is sometimes likened to a growl or chainsaw revving up. Puffins find fish by peeking under the water. They usually dive to depths of 40 to 50 feet. Recent GPS studies have shown that puffins may feed 20 miles or more from their colony. It's remarkable that puffins can hold so many fish at once in their beak. It's likely that they do this by snapping up the first fish, 
then hold it in place with their tongue by opening the beak to snap up additional fish. Most puppins bring home five to six fish at a time. It's very important for puppins to keep their plumage clean by staying clear of their droppings. Head jerking is another behavior often seen among puppins. In early spring, head jerking precedes mating, which usually happens on the water. On land, head jerking means something very different. It can still be between a mated pair, but it's also a behavior that precedes flight. Usually one puppin starts head jerking, and this spreads until the whole flock takes wing. When puffins are rubbing their beaks, it also makes nearby puffins curious when they may edge closer to watch the bone pair. Even though their colors look alike to our eyes, puffins see in the ultraviolet spectrum. So it is likely that this gives more information about gender, health, and age of prospective mates. During the summer, puffins spend a lot of time looking into burrows. These are usually non-breeding puppets, which are especially active and curious. Prospecting refers to searching for a future nesting burrow. When one puffin starts prospecting, start poking into cracks and crevices. Puffins pick their mate and nesting burrow the year before they nest. Sometimes prospecting spreads to other species, like razorbills, who may nest near puffins. Razorbills are distantly related to puffins, but they are in the same family. They are the closest survivor to the great auk, a penguin-like bird that was overhunted and became extinct in 1844. Black guillemots are the smallest member of the auk family and would nest at Matinicus Rock. They are the rarest species of auk in the North Atlantic, but they are the most common auk in the Gulf of Maine. We see them sitting on rocks holding ribbon-like fish called rock eels. Guillemots nest in shallow rock crevices. Guillemots do not compete with puffins and razorbills for food as they feed in shallower water. Matinicus Rock is the southernmost nesting place for common murres. Murres were known to have nested on the island as late as 1840, but they disappeared during the days of seabird hunting. After 27 years of patiently using murr decoys, Murrows nested at Matinicus Rock in 2018. Recognized Arctic terns by their all red bill, pearly gray breast, and short red legs. Arctic terns often keep the same mate from one year to the next, and they can live to be 30 years old or more. Arctic terns hold the record for long distance migration. The birds that nest here at Matinicus Rock have been tracked using tiny little tracking devices called geolocators and shown that they fly all the way to Antarctica for the winter, and then they return in the spring.
White bait is a favorite food for turned adults and their chicks. This Arctic turn chick has received a butterfish for a meal, but is having trouble swallowing it. This is because butterfish are usually too large and too round for the chicks to swallow. Parent turns often stand by as if to help, and they have been known to soak dried butterfish in tide pools, offering them back to the chicks for another try. In a good year, Arctic terns may raise two chicks. Common terns also nest at Matinkus Rock. Distinguish them from Arctic terns by their orange bill with a black tip. They have a whiter breast than Arctic terns, and they have long legs. They usually lay three eggs. Common terns may fly 10 or more miles to capture a single herring to feed their chicks. They used to feed closer inshore than Arctic terns. The Tinkus Rock is one of the few places in Maine where laughing dolls nest. Here, because there is an abundance of terns. And these chase away predatory herring and great black back galls. Herring galls like to eat fish. They are often seen following fishing boats where they eat discarded lobster bait. Great blackback galls are the largest seabird that nests on the Tinnitus Rock, and they are the largest gall in the world. Their wingspan is about six feet from tip to tip. They will eat turn eggs and chicks, and sometimes also take full-grown terns, such as this two-year-old Arctic tern. Common eiders are the largest duck species in North America. This molting male still shows much of the beautiful black and white pattern of the male eiders breeding plumage. But soon, he will lose on feathers that resemble female plumage. Females spend most of their summer preening needing feathers. They were overhunted and disappeared from Maine during the unregulated hunting years leading up to the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1916. Eiders share the grassy interior of the island with several nesting land birds, the most common of which is the savannah sparrow. Spotted sandpipers also nest in the center of the island. This is the only nesting species of shorebird on the Timicus Rock. A walk to the shore may reveal a slumbering harbor seal. When the tide is out, they spend most of their day sleeping. Matinicus Rock is where seabird protection began in the United States. Here, innovative ongoing management continues to sustain this most diverse seabird community on the main coast. Today, seabirds are safe from feather hunters, but their future in a warming, fish depleted ocean is uncertain. Yet, seabirds are resilient and adapt it to change with the help of resident seabird keepers who continue the long tradition of watching over Matinicus Rock. <laughs>